good morning from the parking lot of the Humpty's restaurant here in beautiful Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. We are getting ready for day two of our trip to Elva, Manitoba to see perhaps the oldest grain elevator in Canada. So come along. We've got a lot of distance to go today and not much time to do it. Let's roll. And yes, if you were wondering, there is a moose and a moose jaw here in Moose Jaw. Mac the Moose here at the Tourist Information Center along the Trans-Canada Highway in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. All right, it's kind of windy here and the windscreen on the microphone is no longer magnetic, so it keeps falling off, so I kind of have to try and hold it there, but I don't know if you can see behind me, that is another grain elevator. This one says Dog River, but we are in the town of Rollo, Saskatchewan, and it says Dog River because Rollo was used for the outdoor scenes uh, in the TV show Corner Gas. Now we stopped here not only because we're fans of the TV show, but there's a geocache here called the Dog River Elevator. Okay, made the find. Took a little bit. The elevator wreaks havoc with the GPS, but we found it. Now I have to get a picture of Emily and Mabel, the dog, at Dog River. And we got to get back on the road. We got a lot of miles to cover and we lose an hour with our time zone change on today's trip. So back on the road. So trip update. We are sitting here in the parking lot of the Tim Hortons in Estevan, Saskatchewan. We've uh, been putting in a lot of windshield time this morning. It's about 12 o'clock right now. We're going to lose an hour when we cross into Manitoba, so it's essentially 1 a or sorry 1 p.m. at our destination already. Uh, we've still got about three hours of windshield time to get uh, to where we're going, so it's going to be a bit of a push. Uh, we're not really stopping to film a whole lot of stuff along the way. We're driving through a lot of the towns, taking some pictures of some of the interesting buildings and places that we're stumbling across, but very little filming. So that's why the video's kind of been a little bit short again today. It's, uh, like I said, I think, you know, I wouldn't say we underestimated the amount of windshield time required to get where we're going, but certainly the, the amount of windshield time is uh is factoring into how much exploration and and whatnot so it's still we're having a good time we're just going to grab a bite to eat here grab some fuel because we don't know where our next gas is going to be and we're going to get rolling again Having just left the town of Carnduff, Saskatchewan, we're now on our final push towards the Manitoba border. Uh, the bright sun we were dealing with to start the day has disappeared and things have really clouded over and there's a potential for rain tonight in Brandon. As long as it doesn't turn white, I think we'll be okay. And in a interesting little bit of timing, I'm starting to see the first drops of rain on our windshield. And we have another grain elevator coming into sight. This one here is Car Carry Vale. I'm assuming it still looks like Saskatchewan. Yes, Carry Vale, Saskatchewan, coming into sight here on the right. So here we go, Carry Vale. I figured I should actually start doing some actual video recording of some of these places. I've been taking lots of still pictures of the buildings and things, but. I don't have a ton of footage for today's video. 
this is all new territory for us. We have not uh, checked out any of these places before. The Golden Years Club seems to be the uh, happening place in town. Phone booth on the corner. Don't see those very often. Yeah, I couldn't tell. I think there was still a phone in it. All right, well, Carrie Vale, Saskatchewan. Pulling into Gainsboro, Saskatchewan. Take the next right onto Stevens Street, then turn right onto Antler Avenue. Uh, for those keeping track at home, which is probably no one, I will just mention that we have uh, surpassed the 1,000. 300. Take the next right onto Bruce Street, then turn right onto Antler mm -hmm. Avenue. 1,311 kilometer mark. And Gainsborough looks like it's a town with some really neat buildings. There's an old fire hall here on the right, and an old theater on the left, and this church. Like, wow, this town has got some serious potential the going next right on. Onto Antler Avenue. So we're just checking out here. This stone church has a date stamp on it of 1897. Thank you, Google. 1897. Wow. Ooh, that's a neat old building. Wow. This right onto Young Street, then turn right onto Antler Avenue. This town has got some amazing stuff. General Merchant reminds me of the one in uh, Botha. In 100 meters, turn right onto Hall Street. Coles Garage, Classic Prairie Take the Hotel. Next right onto Hall Street. Wow. Okay, I mean this is this is some great stuff. I had no idea. And yes, I forgot to put my seatbelt on when I got back into the car, so that's why it's yelling at me. Oh, abandoned grain elevator! Yes! And I... There is a... Oh, yes, here we are. Welcome to Manitoba. I wasn't sure there was going to be a sign, but the dead giveaway of the provincial border is often where the highway pavement changes and you can see right here boom pavement change we are officially in Manitoba which means it's now quarter after three in the afternoon and we've still got a long way to go to get to our uh, two elevators well there's more than two elevators two that I really want to see are Vileton and Elva of course Elva being the whole point of this trip and then we still got uh, two hours or so after that to get to Brandon. So we've still got a long way to go and a short time to get there. And we are literally eastbound and down. Welcome to Lyleton, Manitoba. And yes, another grain elevator. Your destination is on the right. Yes, it is. Elva. Oh, you dog is there still there. Well, we'll see. I gotta get out and get pictures here. So there is a little bit of light rain here. I don't think it's going to affect uh, my use of the handheld camera, but I'm certainly not gonna put a drone up here right now. But there's uh, a couple neat other buildings to check as well. So this one's pretty cool. The uh, cupola up at the top. Looks like it's uh, got a little bit of a lean to it. So that's usually a bad sign. As we saw yesterday in Duncan, boy, once they start to lean, they really go fast. Now I did promise you a couple other neat buildings. This one here looks like it was an old shop or some sort. Almost has an old blacksmith shop look to it. And here along the ground, you can see the grass is a little different where obviously a sidewalk was just pulled up. And right over on this corner, 
is the other really neat building we saw along the main road here. And this looks like it could have been another general store, hardware store, that sort of thing. But that is a very neat building as well. And apologize for the wind noise. As I said, the DJI did not do a good job making the windscreen for these microphones very uh, secure. And you can't buy just a replacement windscreen. They make you buy a whole new microphone. So I'm not doing that. All right, well, that's going to do it for Lyleton, Manitoba. And wow, I need to ditch the sunglasses and gain the jacket because it is cold and there's just a little bit of rain in the air. So it's actually kind of not really miserable, but not really nice right now. And we are now on the final push to Elva to go check out reportedly the oldest standard plan grain elevator in the entire country. Let's roll. Okay, I had said let's roll, but before we roll, let's just take a quick walk up the driveway and take a look inside here. It's here, it's open, it's probably not long for this world. It's home to a lot of birds. So for documentation purposes, it's good to see the inside of the Lyleton Grain Elevator. Always a pleasure. Grain elevators have a very distinct odor in them, kind of rotting grain and bird crap. So it makes me feel at home. Not that our home smells like that, but just it's a feeling I'm, or smell I'm used to. And uh, yeah, reminds me of road trips and exploration. <laughs> Okay, now we're getting on the road. Elevator ho! There we go. We just caught our first glimpse of the Elva elevator. I should say Elva elevators, as there is two of them here. Obviously, the shorter one is the one we're the most interested in because it's the one that is reported to be the oldest. We'll talk about that when we get into town. Wow, they told me that the Elva elevator was smaller than your typical prairie grain elevator, but I had no idea how small it was until we got here. Okay, yes, I'm just kidding. This here is the little monument slash model of the elevator that has been put together here to commemorate the upcoming demolition of the Elva Lake of the Woods grain elevator. So as you can see, an unincorpor or an incorporated village was founded in 1891. And that's one of the things we've really discovered on our trip here. The further east you travel on the prairies, the further back in time you are going. You know, around our place, it's not unusual to see towns that are founded in the early 1900s, 1910s, 1920s. But as we've gone further east... We're seeing towns founded all the way into the 1890s. So the towns and the progress followed the railroads and they came from the east. And so that's why it's a very, you know, it's a different experience here. Things are older here than we're used to seeing. This is a beautiful little model of the grain elevator. You can see... Uh, the dirt around it is still very fresh. This was just freshly unveiled uh, just a few weeks ago, I believe. So that's a, a very nice tribute that hopefully will be standing here for many years after the Elva elevators are gone. Now, I have talked a lot about the elevators, um, the, the furthest one down in the shot here, the Elva elevator being thought of as the oldest in Canada. Now, the there is a grain handling facility in Ontario. I don't remember the name of the town, but I'll throw it up here and throw a shot in there uh, for you to look at. Uh, but the name escapes me at the moment. 
But that handling facility dates back, I believe, into the 1870s. So in terms of grain handling, it is actually, you know, older than Elva and is documented as such. Elva is known to be built sometime in the 1890s. I believe the dates that I have seen date it somewhere between 1890 and 1895. And the reason it gets a title as the oldest grain elevator is it's actually the oldest standard plan grain elevator. That facility down in Ontario really does not have the classic prairie grain elevator look to it. It was built more like a, a mill type facility. So these as standard grain elevators would be some of the oldest on the prairies. Now, like I said, no one is really sure when Elva was built. The title for the oldest elevator was sort of contested between Elva, Manitoba and Fleming, Saskatchewan. Unfortunately, Fleming, Saskatchewan was lost to an arsonist, I believe in 2010, right after it had been restored and was being prepared to be opened as a museum. And uh, so that was a terrible loss to the grain elevator community. And uh, now Elva is scheduled for demolition. All we know is what we've been told, and that is it is scheduled to come down sometime this year. Now, I don't know if both of these are going to come down or if it's just the 1890s elevator that's coming down, <laughs> but what the demolition permits won't do, you can see the uh, old, the newer of the two Elva elevators here is doing a pretty good job of coming down as it is with these giant holes on the track side of the elevator. I do apologize. I know that was a very long, strung out uh, section of me talking, but really this is our purpose for being here. This is our destination. So it seems only fitting to give you the full background of why we drove over 1300 kilometers to do uh, document this grain elevator, or, or in this case, these grain elevators. I mean, these are just absolutely amazing structures. <laughs> You can really see the damage on this one here in the corner, but the amount of wood and the amount of effort that went into building these and to, to see them disappearing from the landscape is just a real, a real shame. Now, the weather here in Elva has let up a little bit. And so I think, even though there's a few raindrops in the air, I think I'm going to take a chance and put the drone up. Um, to borrow a phrase from Cameron Tucker of TV's Modern Family, you don't teach your dog to play the banjo and then not go to the talent show. And that's what this is. We came here to drone these grain elevators and I'm going to put Drown O'Can at a little bit of risk here with this rain in the air and throw it up in the sky because this is our last chance to ever see these elevators. and. Somebody, well, they've been well documented, but it's our only chance to document them, and I want to make sure we do them justice. So, let's go fly.
Okay, I think that was a successful flight. Um, nothing crashed. There was a couple close calls when I tried to fly it into the driveway of the elevator. Uh, the other issue, I had a couple times where the gimbal kind of bumped crazily, and I actually thought I had hit something or had a bird strike. So the fact that Drono can returned in one piece, a little bit damp, but I don't think there's any actual damage. So that's great. Wow. I mean, it was... Uh, I thought it would be sadder than it was expecting, you know, to check out a uh, elevator that you know is only days, weeks, maybe if we're lucky, a couple months away from demolition. But it was more kind of awe-inspiring to see something that you know was constructed 130 years ago, roughly, that is still standing and really pretty strong. It's a shame that it has to go away. Any thoughts on Elva? Yeah, it was definitely more impressive than I thought it was. It looks a lot smaller in the photos. I mean, it is small as elevators go, but larger than I thought it would be. The colors on it are so beautiful. The way that the rust and the weathering wood have just kind of changed over time. And it was really neat to see. Glad we made the trip. Any comments, Mabel? Mm, no, apparently not. All right, we got to start hot-footing it towards Brandon. There's probably going to be a few more elevators along the way. Likely won't stop and shoot a lot of video there. We'll probably just get some photos and throw them on the end here is kind of what I expect. Um, I just also wanted to say quickly, uh, thank you to everyone. We have broken through the 500 subscriber mark, so we're halfway there to that point where YouTube considers you a legitimate channel, which is fantastic. We saw a great little growth spurt there that pushed us up over 500, so I hope that continues. And uh, yeah, let's just kind of roll the video out here with uh, what I suspect will be some just uh, brain elevator photos of our way to Brandon, and then we'll bring you day three on the next one. Thank you.